universes and infinite parallel universes constantly being created is literally flow of reality and time as we know it. So, um, technically, there's a universe in which God can exist, right? So, like, as your book suggests, God is everything because of E equals MC squared. Literally, God is within and can be everything. But then again, if there's an infinite number of parallel universes, um, there is an infinite possibility that there's a parallel universe in which God does not exist or is more powerful. In other words, um, can God create an unliftable stone or object? If so, then God should not be able to lift it. But if God is truly powerful, then he should be able to lift it, and therefore he can't create an unliftable stone. So that's a paradox right there. Anyway, um, but the point about that is that that means that there is a power that is greater than God. And considering that there is an infinite number of vibrations and therefore an infinite number of realities within our dimensional space, or, or I guess altered dimensional space, considering that they're either higher or lower, still in the same confined space, there is an infinite number of parallel realities with an infinite number of parallel dimensions um, that actually can create a powerful or a less powerful form of God e equals mc squared as we know it. Um, unfortunately, though, this is a paradox, quite how we encounter one with Aleph Null. In other words, imagine um, a line, right? And then from that line, you put a smaller line that is a fraction of, that is a fracture closer to um, the original line, and then the same thing for that line, the same thing for that. Eventually, sorry, eventually you'll end up with this triangle shape, and that uh, triangle shape is infinity, technically, in a confined space. Now, of course, infinity can't really be put in a confined space, but imagine it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're finding science right. demonstration material here. Mom, do you have a marker? I have a pen already. It's written. Anyway, so um, imagine it like this, right? There's one line, and then a, fracture, a fraction closer and a fraction smaller is the next line. And then a fraction closer and a fraction smaller is the next line. So on, so on, and so on. So eventually we get this sort of thing. It's a little bit like this. Now, that's infinity in a confined space because there's nothing here or here because this is still there. But what happens when you add a line here? Now, that is actually still infinity because it's still in the same place, but it's not in a confined space, you may say. So then what if we do the same thing over here? Well, no matter how much you do it, it is technically still infinity. This quantity is still infinity. And you could do this forever and then do an even bigger version of that, so on and so on. But if you're talking about this being aleph null and this also being aleph null, that can't really be possible. So if we're ordering in one, as in one, two, three, four, five, six, blah, 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 and then what comes after that, we get an interesting term, which is omega which is the lowercase form of omega you might know, but we're talking about lowercase here. And then after omega, omega necessarily isn't bigger than aleph null. It's just an ordered form of infinity. So imagine it like this, omega plus 1, and then omega plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, and so on and so on and so on and so on. Until eventually we get to the omega 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 to the mu all the way up for alpha null to omega to omega to omega. You get the point. Anyway, what we're getting here is we're getting into a factoring infinity to the highest level. And after that, eventually, you get other facts like trin and a whole bunch of other higher infinities. And a lot of theorists, such as myself, have believed to figure out these highest infinities to a point where we start to get to um, our cardinals. And after we get to our cardinals, we start to get to uncountable cardinals. Um, for more information, you can go to a Vsauce video, How to Count Past Infinity. It basically reviews this infinite information if you don't understand it. But the point... <laughs> I don't the, think there are many people who understand this other than you, <laughs> Max Lachen. So you were saying back to the E equals MC squared and the new definition of God, which was our original conversation, 
You're saying it's accurate, but are you saying it's not accurate? Right, so just like quantum physics and superposition, everything can be in a state of either positive and negative at the same time, rather than positive or negative, as we know in our mechanical classical world here. Um, but that means that there is an infinite number of parallel universes in our multiverse. Um, let's move that there and focus more here on these lines. In our multiverse, and there's an infinite number of these realities, and every and in each reality, as every electron spins an animator of an animator to an animator to an animator around a nuclei of an atom, we're catapulted into you know a million other, or sorry, not a million, an infinite number of alternate universes. Just imagine this is the start of the universe. This is our original timeline, right? But as soon as this starts. We are infinitely catapulted into an infinite number of parallel universes. Uh, and somewhere infinity down the line, here's our universe, right? And then we're constantly shifting into alternate universes as we speak. And that expansion of infinite universes is our reality as we know it in time. So, therefore, um, if there are other universes there next to ours, and this actually relates to um, my theory of the Mandela effect and how the particle accelerator altered the weight of one electron and therefore sh destroyed our universe and shifted us into the universe that's directly next to it, and therefore things are different in this universe. So you um, believe that this thing that some people call the Mandela effect is actually real? Oh, absolutely real. Can you describe what it is for people who have never heard it before? Sure. So the Mandela effect is uh, the effect of some people thought that Nelson Mandela died in a, at a certain time, and other people remember it as a different time. And this goes for a lot of other things, you know, uh, Star Wars, um, classic videos, mirror, mirror on the wall. Everybody knows that. Well, well, if you actually look back to the original film, it's not mirror, mirror on the wall. It's it's magic mirror on the wall. And some people actually... Which, of course, it's not. It's not, In right. the reality I grew up in. Right, exactly. Uh, and, I mean, some people in this reality, I guess, maybe didn't make it from our last reality, I'm thinking. Um, I'm still trying to figure out why they don't remember it. Um, and some people do. But anyway, though, that is the Mandela effect, and we are living in an alternate expansion of our universes. Even in my own scientific notes, I've found uh, rewritten signatures and things that are a little bit different from originally what I wrote. So um, how did that actually happen? Let's take your notebook, or let's take Mirror, Mirror on the Wall, and, like an old film, animated film. How did it actually change? Well, it never changed. We changed. You see, we were moving relative to our universe, and then our, our universe destroyed, so now the universe move, well, started to move, or I guess our parallel universes, our multiverse started to move parallel to us because we were out of alignment and that just destroyed everything. So technically, we so, I mean, the universe didn't change, we did. I just had a little pause there. Um, just my accident, we weren't <laughs> deleting okay. anything. People were saying, whoa, what's going on? Um, because <clears throat> I had a text coming in. Um, so. There are two studios, let's say the Disney studios. One studio, Studio A, creates a film that has magic mirror on the wall. Another studio says mirror, mirror on the wall. Is it two separate studios or, or what happened? No, same studio, different timeline. Um, so, good thing we have a multi-layered napkin. <laughs> <laughs> this is very high tech. Yeah. In terms of our graphics. Definitely sophisticated. Go ahead. Anyway, so, as I said... Because I love that one, because everyone remembers Mirror, Mirror on the Wall. I mean, there's no does. one, and there's a whole Sally Field, you, lo you like me, you really, really like me, yeah. and blah, 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 and now it, it's... They you will like come, me. build it. He will come. Uh, the peace sign. Um, oh, really? I didn't know about that one. Oh, yeah, there's so much. I have a, a record of all the ones that I've been able to Of course, and, of course you and, do. Um, some other stuff that I should tell you personally about later. Okay. Uh, Can't anyway, wait. so yeah, infinity down the line from our original timeline. Where here's ours, and I mean, of course, this timeline is only moving forward because, well, the expansion of infinite number of realities behind it. But what happened was we made this universe sort of out of balance, 
And our universe... Because of the, the collider, the super collider? Yeah, we altered the weight of a single electron, which I believe shifted us into a parallel universe, considering that we caused a chain reaction that could have catastrophically destroyed our universe. I mean, even when we th thought about starting it, we thought our universe would implode, and then it didn't, and we're like, oh, it's okay. Well, maybe it did implode. We just instantly got shifted to another universe. In and that's your belief? Right, in my belief. Uh, of course, this is just a theory, and it's still being developed. Okay. But, yeah, maybe in that infinitely small moment of time, we were instantly shifted. Could it also be that there were some people at CERN who were kind of like, quantum hackers, and they go, oh, we have this little vulnerability in time-space continuum, and we're going to go in and we're going to pick these iconic moments in our civilization, you know, mirror, mirror on the wall, things like that, and we're going to change them just to screw up people's heads to realize mm -hmm. that reality is not as they think it. That could be completely possible, although there's some stories, fairy tales, campfire, scary tales <laughs> that um, occurred at CERN, supposedly, um, or that are set at CERN, uh, dimensional beings or satanic portals, a um, whole bunch of other crazy stuff. Um, and a lot of people believe they have, to, they have to do that to consistently maintain our universe or, or bridging two universes or dimensions even together. Uh, now, <laughs> then again, they're fairy tales. Okay. And since when are fairy tales real? But then again, all fairy tales are based off of something. Anyway. Yeah, back to eternity. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. So when this universe was destroyed, then again, here's our progression of infinite expansion of parallel universes. And here's ours. When this one just destroyed itself and as i said there there's an infinite number of parallel universes that means there's an infinite possibility that everything contained within our infinite range happened existed will happen for example there's a reality where possibly <laughs> maybe this world didn't even occur maybe there's a reality where our universe instantly started and then destroyed itself there's an infinite number of possibilities but Which however is such an incredible thing to try to wrap your hand or head around it, right? It's almost impossible. Yeah, there's... The, just the word infinity is almost impossible to right, really and completely then understand. Then again, there are higher levels of infinity, as you'll see in videos. Higher and... levels of infinity. So yeah, infinity there... is not just infinity. There's oh, yeah, variations there's on that theme. There's higher levels of infinity. There's smaller infinities, bigger, larger infinities. There is, it's hard to wrap your mind around that there is something larger than everything. Which is, how do you... It's right? even a paradox as itself. It's an oxymorotic phrase. Um, and that's where you come back to God. Well, God could be God of the universe or the multiverse, but then... There must be another multiverse of multiverses of multiverse where there's a universe where there is another more powerful or less powerful or equal God as we defined it in e equals MC squared, the new definition of God. So, other than you and maybe a few other people, we're really not going to figure this out, are we? Not for a while. Not, I don't think so. <laughs> but, uh... Okay, go ahead. Anyway, so, the funny thing well, about... Well, I mean, do you feel like you have it figured out? Well, I think I do, yeah. But then again, this is all just a theory. And since when can you prove a theory about infinite universes and infinity and alternate realities? When can you prove that? So... Do I think that I know it? I think that I might have some basic, very, very basic idea, even gist, of what possibly can be happening. But then again, this is just theoretical physics, and even in, you know, the title, it's theoretical. Right. I don't right. actually know everything that's happening. I, there, I, there's never a way that I can. So, really, it's just a matter of... How much do I think that I can explain the unexplainable? Got and it. maybe I'm not even explaining at all. Who right, knows? but <laughs> and any of this stuff is so vast and so amazing. It's just like you know people's 
concepts are completely blown of, of right. anything once they tap into these larger realities. Anyway, let's finish this and see if we can at least understand right. straight lines here right. and the Mandela effect. Right. So universes that are right next to each other, and as I said, these are infinitely close yet infinitely far away from each other. We have our universes. And the farther away a universe is, the more different it is because of each individual event. Now, the distance and amount of universes between these two lines is infinite. Like, it's kind of crazy. You can't draw it or visualize it. It's just infinite between each line and then an infinite line between their lines and lines and lines and lines okay. and lines, infinite over and over again. But anyway, somewhere down the infinity over here, we have a parallel universe, right? And in this parallel universe, maybe it's completely different. Like, everything is completely different. Like, maybe our, our entire existence is nothing and never will happen, but maybe there is, maybe time's running backwards, or maybe everything is slightly off in a way, like universes aren't created from nuclear reactions, more just form, and then nuclear reactions occur, which then create more universes, which then reverse to create other universes. As I said, infinite, pos inf infinite universes, infinite everything. So there's an infinite number of possibilities. And even as I speak this, my very speaking of this is creating an infinite number of universes, and in one, and in many of them, this is exactly possible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> okay, so back to, let's see if we can wrap this up, the Mandela effect, and let's have <laughs> at least one human being who might watch this potentially be able to understand what you're saying. Right. So when our universe was destroyed over here... And this was, you think, when CERN Super Collider did its experiment? Large Hadron Collider, yeah. Or the, the, the Hadron? L Large Hadron Collider, Large, right. Okay. And um, so after our universe and timeline was destroyed, we were, let's zoom this in a lot, zoom, 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 and the universe that's directly next to ours... It's just directly next to ours. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed, only transferred from form to form. But if there's an infinite number of universes, then there's 100% chance that this happened, at least maybe in another universe, maybe not ours. Then again, there's also an infinite chance that this is our universe. So if this one was eliminated, all the energy from this universe created or transferred a universe that was right next to us. So, so the, the original universe is... Um, mirror, mirror on the wall. The, right. the transferred to universe is magic mirror on the wall. Right, and even if you um, have quantum data or other things that possibly could help calculate these claims, then you'll find that there is a fluctuation pattern of which our universe is on a similar plane. So if this is our plane, there's universe in this plane, which means that this is a larger dip and this is a smaller dip. So that way there's a fluctuation in our reality of actually things that are real, that are real to us but are different in other realities. And there's a consistent fluctuation, and I think this fluctuation is known as the Mandela effect for some things. And a lot of things are the same, but other things are, you know, very different. So in this universe, it's pretty much exactly, almost exactly the same as ours. For the fact that we're all here, almost, and that everything that we see is pretty much the same. What do you mean, almost? Almost as in, like, I don't know. There's an infinite number of possibilities, so there has to be at least an infinite possibility that somebody on this planet is gone from that time. Or maybe there is an infinite possibility that there is. But the point is, is that it's a parallel universe to ours, so it is not our universe. It is just, it's just not ours, but... So we are now not in the same universe that we were in when Mirror, Mirror on the Wall was a part of a film. Well, that's what I'm theorizing, yeah. So we're in a different universe. Exactly, completely different universe. Even though it looks almost actually, otherwise completely the is, same. Is, Exactly the same, except for that zero 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 infinite number of zeros one. Yes. Percent difference. Right. And that one percent difference is large on our scale, or even small on our scale, but it's still different. 
enough that it's able to contain our energy, but not enough that it's the same. As I said, it's a parallel universe. It's not the same as ours. And if we have to arrive at the same time that we left, then there has to be difference. There's that fluctuation. And one of these fluctuations was maybe something different. Maybe one person decided to walk on the other side of the sidewalk, as it is uncertainty, at least in our future. I mean, if you're in a higher dimension like the fifth dimension or looking on our fourth dimension, uncertainty is just a matter of which way you're going like a road. But to us, uncertainty doesn't happen because we can only see the present as it's happening. But anyway, wow. yeah, yeah, so parallel okay. universe fluctuations. <laughs> so Mary, yeah. is it mirror, mirror on the wall or magic mirror on the wall? Mirror, mirror. Definitely a vote for mirror, mirror. Right. Right? Actually, there was, another, there was a movie that was done. Julie Roberts was in a movie called Mirror, Mirror. Yeah. Based off of that quote. Right, but maybe that movie is now called Magic Mirror. Actually, I checked. It's, it's Mirror, Mirror. Okay. So they didn't fix, they didn't change that. Right. They but th then again, there's a parallel universe where they did change that. Or we just shifted into a parallel universe, but that also changed. That one thing also changed. And you can find that <laughs> multiple things have changed. Where it wasn't one. Julia Roberts, it was Meryl Streep. Right. Again, I think what's exciting, and, and someone who is less sophisticated than you, uh, like no, myself. No, 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 everybody is exactly the same. Everybody pretty much is equal, just in different ways, more right. accurately. Like one person is equal in maybe his ability to identify multiple different forms of color, but to him, that's just regular. Right. There we, was, what's the name of that, that? What's the name of that that crab or, or something that could, oh, that hammers the mantis people? Shrimp? Yeah, the what? The mantis, the mantis shrimp. Right, can see like a million different kinds of colors. Twelve different colored planes. We can only see three different colored planes. It could see in twelve. Right, so um, cool. Anyway, the yeah. I, the point that I was trying to make when I was talking about sophistication, the bottom line, which you've been repeating in many different ways throughout this little Facebook Live thing, okay. is that infinite universes and just the very concept of infinity is pretty mind boggling. I mean, yeah, it's like, I mean, and it, but, but it affects everything mm -hmm. on a theor at least a theor theoretical basis. Well, yeah, everything and nothing. So. And there we go. Yeah, so it's pretty <laughs> uncertain, but then again, uncertainty is uncertain. And uncertainty can be certain and uncertain at the same time. There you go. No, I think, yeah. I think that sums it up. There it is, quantum physics right there from, yeah. say, say your name? Maxwell Lawhon. And you are a? Well, I'm a theoretical physicist. Of course, and you're how old? 13. There you go. Thank you, Max. Ooh.